guys, welcome to our online service. We are so happy you could join us here today. But before we get into the word, let's get into a time of giving. Giving is like sowing a seed. When you sow a seed, it bears fruit. Some of the fruits are lives are being transformed and the poor are being reached. So I encourage you to give today. We have made it easy for you to give. All the details are on your screen below. Now let's get into the word. Keep everything on the side. Every good thing, every bad thing. Keep it on the side. Keep your brain on the side for a moment. And let me teach you how to believe. Yeah. This is a moment. This is a time like no other where you're going to learn how to believe. Are you ready yeah. to do that? Finally, ready? All right, let's go. Jesus said what? How do you make all things possible? All things are possible for the one who believes, right? So the key is believing. The key is believing and the question is how do I believe? The lesson is how to believe. And last week was lesson number one. And lesson number one was believing starts with seeing. seeing. I came this side, that side answer. <laughs> believing starts with seeing. seeing. Okay. Believing starts with seeing. So this week, week number, the lesson number two, week number three, let me ask you a question. If believing starts with seeing, and seeing is important, then how do you see? How do you see? You don't see with your eyes. You actually see with your mind. You don't see really with your eyes. You see with your mind. You need your eyes to see. Okay, take care of your eyes. Now don't just start plucking your eyes and throwing it there. You need your eyes to see. You see with the help of your eyes. That's why Adi has four. You see with the help of your eyes. You see through your eyes, but you don't see with your eyes. You actually see with your mind. Because here's the, here, uh, check this out. If you really saw with your eyes, then everyone would see everything the same way. Right? Does everyone see everything the same way? Let me prove it to you, okay? Let me show you a couple of pictures, and, and let, me, let me see how do you see this. So when you... See this. What do you see? What do you see? Food, meat, chicken, pork, lollipops. I hope there are no vegans in the house. I'm so sorry. But, but you see? Do you see the different answers? Yes. Right? It's the same picture, but everyone is seeing it differently. Yeah. This is pork, by the way. Okay? This is a, a, a roasted leg of pork. And it's this big. And it's a real thing. It's not from Google. It's not from Google. This is, this is from my trip from Sri Lanka. When I went to Colombo, Sri Lanka. But do you see? I'm saying yum. You're saying yuck. It's the same thing. And there was skin. I asked, I asked the guy, can I eat the skin? He said, yes, sir, anything that you want. You're paying for this. So they gave me skin. And it's so much fun to eat skin. And the skin had the little bit of hair. Do you see? Do you see? Do you see that? When Sunil sees this, Sunil's like, please, I don't want to look at the screen. I'm looking down. Right? It's the same picture, but a different perception. It's the same pork, the same pig, but different perspectives. Yeah. Why? Because you don't see with your eyes. You see with your mind. Let me change the picture. Some of you guys are not even looking at me. Check this out. When I see this, I see a demon. <laughs> but when Sunil sees this, Sunil sees angels. Right? Because he loves Android. In fact, he worships Android. When it comes to Apple versus Android, I'm not his pastor. Right? 
same demon. <laughs> Different depictions. Uh, sorry, I am thinking for alliterations here. Let me show you another picture to prove my point again. You, you, you know this guy? Now wait, wait. When I see this picture, I see the goat, the greatest of all time. But let me ask some Ronaldo fans about this. What do you think? Huh? What do you think? They're smiling. They can't say anything because uh, uh, the, uh, the, a goat is a goat if he has the cup, right? Yeah. Same person, different perceptions. Same picture, different perspectives. Why? Because you don't really see with your eyes. You really see with your mind. Last week, I, I took you to a story from the Bible about the spies in the promised land. You remember that? Yeah. The spies in the promised land. Let me go there again. In fact, we'll visit that story again and again. Because I told you last week, and I'll say this again. That story is the best story to teach a believer how to believe. Right? Let me show, this, uh, let me show you the story again. So, Numbers 13. Lucky number 13. Verse 1 and 2. The Lord spoke to Moses and, and told him, send men to spy the land of Canaan. Say Canaan. Canaan. Everybody. Canaan. Canaan, okay. Sp send spies to uh, spy out the land of Canaan. Now Moses sent them to spy out the land of? Canaan. What was the land called? Canaan. Canaan. And check this out. Caleb said, we are well able to overcome it. The others said, we are not able. Some are saying well able, others are saying not able. Question, which land are they talking about? Canaan. Canaan, right? Is everyone looking at Canaan? All the spies, 12 spies went to Canaan? Or they went to Kandalim? Canaan, sure? Everyone looking at Canaan? And yet some are saying well able, others are saying not able. They're looking at the same land. Some are looking at possibilities. Others are looking at impossibilities. They're looking at the same land. Some are seeing goodness of God. Others, others are seeing giants in the land. You're listening to the same sermon. Some are seeing faith. Others are looking at the watch. When is it getting over? Come on now. You could be in the same church and some are on fire, others are on the fence. You could be in the same room and some are responding and receiving, others are repelling and rejecting. Come on now. You could be reading the same Bible and some are seeing miracles in their lives and others are messing up their lives. You could worship the same Jesus and some are talking about all things are possible, others are talking about everything that is not possible. Same Bible, different beliefs. Same message, different manifestations. Same promised land, different reports. One good report and one bad report, right? And here's what I realized after reading that story again and again and again. Um, the ones who came back with a good report were just two, two spies. The ones who came with a bad report were 10 spies. The ones with a bad report were way more than the ones with a good report. Isn't that so familiar? Isn't that exactly what happens in your life? Because you see more of bad reports than you see of good reports. Come on now. Any honest people in the house? You see more tragedies than you see testimonies. Come on now. You see more of bad news than you see good news. That's why you have more of unbelief than you have belief. That is why it happens. That is why it happens. Okay, let me ask you a question. Let, let me make this absolutely real. What church do you go to? Why, did, why was that pause? I'm starting to doubt. What church are you a part of? 
What church do you attend? Yes. You sure? Yes. Absolutely sure. Yes. Then how come I'm preaching about faith for the longest time? Every message I preach is always about positivity, a hope, and everything towards uh, the goodness of God. How come there are some people in the room who are still negative? Wow. What church do you go to? Because secretly, some of you attend other churches, right? Come on now. Secretly, okay, secretly some of you, uh, you know, go to other churches and may not, maybe not physically, but also uh, online. At least online you attend other churches, right? Come on. And I'm not talking about Bethel. I'm not talking about Hillsong. I'm not talking about Elevation. I'm not talking about Transformation. I'm not talking about the King's Temple. I'm not talking about FOLJ New Delhi because I love these churches. These are my friends. These are, these are like brothers and fathers to me. I love those churches. I'm not talking about those churches. I'm talking about the church of gossip. Some of you go to the church of gossip during the week, right? Some of you tithe in the church of gossip. You give your thighs because you're willing to pay for lunch for an opportunity to gossip with that person. Come on now. I'm talking about the church of criticism. I'm talking about the church of negativity. I'm talking about the church. Uh, I'm talking about the church of the news. Some of you are paid members, right? You know how long my sermons are, averagely? How long I preach? 45, one hour? <laughs> 45 minutes, right? W without the jokes, without the jokes, 45 minutes at least. And you think it's long. And once a week, 45 minutes. You know how, some, how long some people watch the news? You know how long some people are listening to the sermon called the news? Some people have news on their TV 24-7. Do you know I am not your pastor, for some of you? For some of you, your pastor is not Pastor Gavin. For some of you, your pastor is Pastor Goswami. <laughs> Arnab Goswami is your pastor, right? Is he, is he, still, uh, uh, is he still preaching the news? Is, or is he in jail? I don't know. I, I heard. I've not watched the news in the longest time. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're affirming my worship leader saying, I don't also watch it. But I'm serious. I'm serious. You're laughing, but I'm serious. Your pastor, really, is Pastor Goswami. Your pastor is the news anchor because you receive more from that news anchor than you receive from the man of God that God has placed in your life. Come on now. You should stop calling me pastor if you don't receive the word that I preach. And for the others who are laughing, ha ha ha, I don't watch the news, Shamida, not, not you, but some of you don't need the news because you have friends who are more negative than news presenters. That friend that you gossip with, that is your pastor. That negative neighbor that always complains about everything, that is your pastor. For some people, Instagram is your pastor. For some people, Facebook is your pastor. For some people, music is your pastor. For some people, Netflix is your pastor. Entertainment is your pastor. Whatever, whatever you see the most, whatever you watch the most, whatever you focus on the most, that thing or that one is feeding your mind the most. Why? Because you don't see with your eyes, you see with your mind. Who's your pastor? I should title the sermon, Who's your pastor? Ooh, some people are... Right? And, and let me show you what's happening because of your other pastors, okay? All these pastors, right? Let me show you what's happening because of Pastor Goswami. You ready? Let me show you this, okay? Um... They gave the people a bad report of the land. Okay, this is Pastor Goswami. They gave the people of Israel a bad report of the land, right? And check this out. So the people said to one another, let's select a new leader and return to Egypt. Because of a bad report. Because of a bad news. 
people said to each other, let's go back. Let's select a new leader and return to Egypt. Let's get a new passport and go to England. No, no, I'll not say that. I'll not say that. But, 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 check this out. I need to poke you a little bit. Not so much. Not stab you, but pick you. Sometimes. Because here's what's happened. Because of a one bad report, a whole nation said no to the promised land. Can you believe it? Because of one bad report, two million people rejected the promise of God. My question is, what bad report has made you reject the promises of God in your life? What bad news has made you reject the promise of God about your city Goa, about your country India? What bad news did you watch? What bad theology has made you reject the promise of God about prosperity? Who deceived you in believing that prosperity is a bad thing and not from God? Who is that pastor? What bad teaching has made you reject the promise of God about your healing? Who is that pastor? What bad report has made you reject the promise of God about your blessing? Who is that pastor? Who is your pastor? Who is your real pastor? Who is feeding your mind is my question. Because here's the key. Listen up now. With all the eyes and ears that you have on your face, listen up. Whoever is feeding your mind is also shaping your heart. Yeah. Whoever is feeding your mind is shaping your heart. You know what's the shape of your heart? It's not like this. Oh, not the scientific, no, no, no. That's not the shape of your heart. Because of all the junk that you fed your heart, that's the shape of your heart. Whoever is feeding your mind is shaping your heart. And here's the flip of the sermon. I'm about to flip the sermon, you turn. Okay, because you thought I'm talking about the mind, right? Some of you thought I'm talking about the mind. No, 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 the problem is not your mind, the problem is your heart. Because check this out, check this out. You see with your mind, that's true, but you believe from your heart. Yeah. Believing starts with the mind, but believing happens from the heart. That is where all things become possible, if you believe in your heart. The Bible says this, check this out, Roman 10.10, 10. Romans 10.10, 10. for it is with your heart that you believe. It is with your heart that you believe. Real believing happens in the heart. Real believers, are you a real believer? Yes. Not yet. You'll become one soon. You believe in Jesus, but you don't believe like Jesus yet. That's why you need this teaching. Real believers believe from the heart. Fake believers believe in the mind. And the problem is, the word is all things are possible. That's the promise of God. That's the word God gave us. That's the word for 2023. That's our vision. And everyone is like, all things are possible. And how you make all things are possible? When you believe, right? Because Jesus says all things are possible for the one who believes. Believes. And so everyone now wants to believe. All of you guys are like, yeah, 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 let us believe. Let us believe. I ask you, do you believe? You say, yes, amen. I believe. I believe. But here's the problem. You believe. I believe you that you believe. You believe. It's true. But you believe in the mind and not in the heart. How do I know that it's true? Because immediately after Jesus said, all things are possible for the one who believes, immediately, the very next verse, this happens. Check this out. Verse 24. 23, Jesus says, all things are possible for the one who believes, right? Immediately, the father of the child cried out and said, I believe, but help my unbelief. I believe, pastor, but in your heart, there's unbelief. Is it possible to have belief and yet have unbelief? 
Is it possible to believe and yet have unbelief? Absolutely possible. In fact, most people in this room, most people watching online, you believe. You really believe. But you have unbelief. And that's because you believe in the head. And you have unbelief in the heart. All things won't become possible if you have unbelief in your heart. So you need to change the shape of your heart. And this is not a romantic word. This is a faithful word. Because Jesus said this in two chapters. This is amazing. Two chapters after Mark 9. In fact, in Mark 11.23. This is Mark 9.23, right? All things are possible. Mark 9.23. Mark 11.23. Jesus says this. Both end in 23. And the year is 2023. No, no, simply, I just said this. I'm not into new numerology. <laughs> Everything is powerful. <laughs> Assuredly, I say to you, some, some people who are into new numerology are like, yes, this is the, now you believe it is the word from God. Everything is the word from God. I assuredly say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes, then those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Mountains will move. But mountains won't move if you believe in the head. Mountains move when you believe in the heart. Miracles won't happen if you believe in the head. Miracles will happen when you believe in the heart. Believing is not a head thing. Believing is a heart thing. And the reason why the word is not working in your life, the reason why prayers are not being answered in your life, the reason why you're not seeing mountains move in your life, the reason why you're not seeing miracles happen in your life is because you believe. You started believing. I believe you. You started believing in the head, but it has not yet reached your heart. Have you heard... People say, don't worry, it will happen in the right time. Let me take a sip of water. Christians say this all the time, right? Don't worry, it will happen in the right time. God will do it in the right time. It will happen. Just wait, just believe it will happen in the right time. Have you heard that? Right? And the Bible says this over and over again. Let me read you one of the verses. It says, just at the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. The right time. And so I've seen so many Christians wait for the right time. You're waiting for the right time. In fact, some of you in this room are waiting for the right time. Right? Yeah. You're waiting for the right time. But what is the right time? What's the right time? How long are you going to wait? Who knows the right time? God knows the right time. God knows the right time. Let me ask you a question. Does God follow time? Is there time in heaven? Is there time in the spiritual world? Is there a giant clock in heaven going tick tock, tick tock? Does God have a watch? Does he wear a watch? What watch does God wear? Is it a Rolex? Is it an, is it an Omega? Is it an uh, Apple Watch? Android Watch? There's no Android Watch? What watch does God wear? What time zone does God live in? Because that is the right time, right? What if, I think this is the reason, Sunil, why our prayers are not getting answered. Because God is answering prayers in Eastern Standard Time and we are in Indian Standard Time. Right? <laughs> The right time? What is the right time? Does God follow time? If God followed time, he could not have created time. Jesus never said all things are possible at the right time. My brother. Jesus said all things are possible for the one who believes. Now, with all the cavities in, in your head, in your skull, listen to me very carefully because this is the key for every believer to believe and make all things possible. You listening? You listening? Yes. The right time is the time taken for your belief to travel from your head to your heart. 
that is the right time. <laughs> believing starts in your mind. Believing happens in your heart. It is the heart that you need to believe in. It's the heart. Don't your neighbor and say, it's the heart. Don't worry, it's not Valentine's Day, so you don't have to stay longer with the word heart. But, but what's the heart? What's the heart? And it's very important for you to know. What's the heart? Because when the Bible says heart, it doesn't mean your cardiovascular organ of your body that pumps blood all the time, right? It doesn't mean that. I hope you know that. I hope you know by now. But what you don't know, and a lot of Christians think, when God says heart, it means the Valentine's Day heart. It means the Shah Rukh Khan heart, right? That's what Christians think. It's the emotional heart. That is not the heart. When Bible means, says heart, the Bible means your subconscious mind. Ooh, the silence. Yes, you have a subconscious mind. And no, this is not a new age church. Because Christians get so scared when they hear subconscious mind, right? Believers, all things are possible, subconscious mind. <laughs> They're talking about subconscious mind in that church. So, uh, someone came to me and said, uh, I read a book about the subconscious mind. I said, why do you have to read about the subconscious mind in the book? The Bible talks about the subconscious mind over 800 times, 830 something times. Do you know that? But it doesn't say subconscious mind, it says the heart. The heart. And the world gave the term subconscious mind. But that's the heart. The heart is not your emotional self, that's your soul. The heart is not the spirit. The heart is your subconscious mind. And when the Bible says heart, the Greek word for heart is the word kardia. K-A-R-D-I-A. That's where cardio comes from. But cardia doesn't mean your physical heart. Cardia means the seat of your soul. The seat of your soul. You have a soul? You have a soul that is active? You have a soul that is living? You have a soul that is jumping all the time, right? You have a soul that changes all the time? What is your soul? Mind, will, emotions, right? Your emotions change all the time, correct? Sometimes you're high, sometimes you're low. Your will changes all the time. Sometimes it's yes, sometimes it's no. Your mind changes all the time. You say that most of the time, I change my mind, right? But there is a part of your mind that does not change. There's a part of your soul that does not change. That is the seat of your soul. That is your mind set. That is your belief system. That is your subconscious mind. That is your heart. And real believing happens in your heart. All things are possible if you believe from the heart. And if you want to learn how to believe, you learn to how, you'll have to learn how to believe from your heart. So it won't happen with books. It will happen with the word of God because the word of God pierces to your heart. And I want to teach you how to believe from the heart. But I cannot teach you today. I'll continue this next week. All right, so you have to come next week. Next week is the bomb. Today is the, the, the spark of the bomb. But today I want to give you the key how to believe with your heart. You ready? I'll give you an illustration and you'll understand with this key. But before that, let me ask you a question. Can you see what's in your heart? Can you see? Is it possible for you to see what's in your heart? Can I see what is in your heart? No? No? Let me prove it to you, okay? Let me give you an illustration. Sunil, why don't you come up? Come up, come up. Now, I'm going to show you what's in your heart, okay? 
um, but and you guys don't cheat, okay? Don't don't tell the answer. You uh, you'll have to close your eyes, turn the side, and then look at the screen, okay? After some time. Now don't cheat. Close your eyes. On the count of three, you're gonna look at the screen, okay? One, two, and three. <laughs> what happened? Why you step down from the holy stage? <laughs> What was that? What was that? <laughs> you know what that was? That was an indication from the heart. Because in your heart, there's a big lizard. <laughs> this lizard is not in your head. This lizard is in your heart. <laughs> Give him a big hand. Uh, done, done. But I'll keep the lizard on, okay, for some time. How many of you don't like lizards? who freak out, you will really get this illustration. You will really get this now. Let me keep it for some time. Because here's the thing, check this out. Emotions are a response from your heart. It's an indication from your heart. It tells you what you have in your heart. And if you really believe, if you really believe for healing, then when you pray about healing, when you listen about healing, when you see healing, You'll get that, like Sunil got, from your heart. In your mind, healing is very small. Healing is a hundred times smaller than your sickness, right? Sickness is very big because your mind tells you, see the pain, you can feel the pain, you can feel the hurt. Sickness is real, sickness is huge. Healing is just a few words on a text, by stripes, you are healed. That's such a small thing in your mind. But when it goes in your heart, healing becomes as vast as the ocean and your sickness becomes a tiny grain of sand on the shore and the tiny grain drowns in that vast ocean and that is how you get healed when you believe in your heart. Whatever you put in your heart magnifies and drowns out everything that is in your head and everything that is in your life. That's why you have to believe, not in your head, but in your heart. Real believing happens in your heart. Powerful believing happens in your heart. Believing for healing happens in your heart. Believing for miracles, believing for everything that you need happens in your heart. Believing for all things to become possible happens in the heart. Just like how you believe in Jesus in your heart. Heart, in the same way to believe like Jesus, you have to believe from your heart. All things are possible for the one who believes from the heart. <laughs>